Hey everyone, it's Monday the 9th of uh, January and it's uh, 10 past 2 in the morning and as you can see I'm in the bedroom. Okay, for this video um, I just want to talk about what I've been doing here. So it is diecast related as you can see. Um, Something has happened to the moped, so I want to talk about that as well. Bicycle lights is a third thing I wanted to talk about because of something that was mentioned on a post of mine on Facebook. Um, and there's probably a few other things that I'm just going to ramble about, so this could be quite a lengthy video. It's going to be at least an hour, anyway, at least. Okay, so we'll start with the diecast. So... Yesterday, technically, I decided it was time to uh, take all the corgis off of this shelf. Apart from those on the boxes there, I have dusted them, I just haven't taken them off the shelf. Still need to take these buses off. And those lorries off and whatnot as well. Um, it took me long enough to get all the cars off because I was dusting each and every one as well. They're actually in. That brown tub there, plus I threw, because that's full, I threw some on a couple of tubs of corgis that are on the floor. Now there's a couple of reasons I wanted to do this. Uh, one, they need a dusting. And two, as it's been about a year since I last changed this display around, I figured it was about time that I did it again. So, I've got everything off, apart from those buses and lorries. Um, I'm going to reorganise these Hot Wheels as well. They've got to be taken off so I can rearrange those. In fact, I might actually leave those ones exactly where they are now that I think about it. Because I've got like four, four of these um, sets. Sainsbury's used to sell these, but they haven't had them in for months. So I don't know if they've actually stopped stocking those ones. Or if Hot Wheels have stopped doing them, I don't know. I've got another like three sets over here to go back up here somewhere. So I do want to just rearrange a few things. I might take these ones off and just put some more of the Hot Wheels ones right there. And then move these. I'm not sure where to yet, but... Um, <clears throat> yeah. But it's going to be a job for whenever I get my butt out of bed in the morning because you know it's gone two o'clock now. I don't know why I'm such a night owl. Well I say that, I get up at sort of like nine o'clock so I don't actually sleep for that long. I've been doing that for months now and I don't know why. I've, I've tried to get myself into a better sleeping pattern. I just haven't been able to do it. So I've kind of given up for the time being. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah that's a job for tomorrow so I've been organising all the day or Start to reorganise it. The much, um, stuff on this shelf is going to stay. Uh, that's a lot of vintage stuff. Behind this row, I've got a lot of stuff that I restored, or some stuff that I bought replacement parts for, reproduction parts for, and just decided to leave as is, you know. Like the sight hut truck here. I just bought a reproduction sight hut for it. Because I actually felt the truck itself was in decent enough condition to leave original so and these reproduction parts are not too expensive on eBay mind you I did buy these before COVID so <laughs> it may have gone up by now I've actually got two of these whoops there goes a tractor I'm wondering why I've got two of these if you look at this one it's got different wheels what are you doing you'll be in the pain again this one's got what they call the super fast wheels. So that's why I've got two of these. <clears throat> um, but there is some vehicles that I've restored as well as my stepdad. He restored a few as well. I'll go through those in a different video. Um, yeah, and I have actually got some a near mint example for this as well. One of my favourite castings. These um Ford ambulances. But I say near mint because I've looked this over um, and I've only found two tiny little paint chips. 
There's one right up on this corner. And the other one, where did I find it? Oh yes, just up on that side there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. So yeah, that is what I would consider near mint. And that's why that's actually up there. What are you playing with? Do I even want to know? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I did see a question asked on my last Diecast Hall video. And I've forgotten your YouTube name, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I was asked if there was any um, Diecast car that I just can't resist buying, you know, and actually own a number of. And the answer to that is yes. There's actually a number of different uh, vehicles that I have from different manufacturers. Factors. It's not just from the same one. Although I've noticed it seems to be primarily Matchbox and Corgi. For Corgi, the ones that I find hard to resist... A Mark II for transits. So I have got a number of the transit trucks. In fact, I believe I've only got two yellow, two green, and possibly two blue. And I've got one blue at least. So I have got a number of these transit trucks. And I've got a number of these. Most of them are all different. You know, I've got the police rescue one there. I've got an AA one. I've got the shell one. I've got a mint white BP one there, and I've got the yellow BP rescue one here. So most of them are different. Although with this BP one, I did find another three, possibly four, I can't quite remember, at least three in one of the boxes on the floor just by the tripod legs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I actually do like the Mark II Transit. My favourite Transit actually when it comes to the transit vans and trucks for the Mark II's were, all, were always my favourite and still are. Um, <clears throat> there's a few others that I've actually collected up loads of, like the Buick Regal, including um, a number of duplicates. I ain't got a duplicate of this one, but I have got some duplicates. Although it's not always just because I like that particular casting with the Buicks. It is because I like that particular car, but I've got some that are actually quite rough and would need like a replacement chassis. So that's one of the reasons I've actually bought extra. So at some point I will go through them and, you know, make a good one out of two crappy ones, basically. So that's one of the other reasons I've bought a number of the Buick Regals. And sometimes, you know, they've just appeared in job lots that I've bought and I've just decided to keep them because I like them. But yeah, when it comes to Matchbox, it's either the Ford LTD. I haven't got one on display to show you at the minute. Not of the um, specific style. But yeah, I've got all these special release ones. I've got quite a few of these, actually. But yeah, I have been on eBay to look for some of these, and believe it or not, some of these are not cheap. And there's a dusting as well. But I didn't realise there's <laughs> so many different designs. I don't know why I just put that back on there. I mean, that's a Sheriff one as well, which is exactly the same as the one I just showed you. It's just a different base colour. See? I showed you a white Sheriff one there, and that's another Sheriff one, just in like a red colour. Bronze colour. Ford LTD police car. I always used to call it limited, you know, because that's what LTD usually stands for, but apparently that's not right when it comes to Ford. It is just a Ford LTD. <clears throat> yeah, so I've got a fair bit to do. What I want to do, and that's why I've actually boxed them up, is to go through these and to decide what I want to put back up on the shelf. So I'm going to have a bit of a change around as well. <clears throat> um, 
um, a number of things I want to uh, add to the collection this year as well. You know, corgis from the 60s and 70s, like this one. I want to add some more of these. Um, some of these corgi trucks. And you get so many different variations of these with different bodies and, you know, companies on them. So I wouldn't mind trying to find some more of those. Also get different types of trucks. You know, that was an MAN truck that I just showed you. Or MAN, if you prefer. I've got the Ford Cargo here, which is a Mars truck. I've got another one down here, which is a Cadbury's chocolate one. <laughs> uh, that's another man truck, which has got Perio written on it. I'll put those ones up here, actually. That's what I've got in the box down there. Yeah, so there's a few the, of others I want to add to the collection. I want to add some more Matchbox Super Kings as well. And uh, some more of these in boxes. Because these are the ones I actually remember buying as a kid. I remember going into the shop with mum and being allowed to pick my uh, one toy car for that trip. Because we used to do a shopping trip once a week, you know, we do the weekly shop, so uh, I'd get to pick the one car. <clears throat> That's a sticky label on the inside of the tub. Yeah. And I've always loved that box design as well. I don't know why, it's just been my favourite. And uh, there's a number of those that I've actually got in boxes up there, obviously, that I've also got loose. Um, stored under the bed and mint like this tow truck here I've got that mint and loose I've got a few of the escort cabarets um, I've got that one loose as well I think I've got the London cab and I've got the Rover Sterling loose as well there's a couple of uh, Model A vans up there as well yeah so I think tomorrow's planned out. <clears throat> um, what was the next thing I want to talk about? Oh yeah, the moped. So, I went to use it Saturday and discovered my front tyre was flatter than a witch's tit. I'm not kidding, there's no air in it at all. And when I tried to pump it up, I discovered there's a gash in the side of the tyre about that long and about that far from the wheel rim and pretty much everyone I have spoken to have said that would have likely been done deliberately there are, everyone seems to be thinking along the same lines I am that it was done deliberately um, I don't want to get into too much detail but I do have something I suspect actually yeah let's just talk about it um, I suspect my neighbour um, and I'll explain why and this actually starts Christmas 2021 now <clears throat> Christmas 2021 my neighbour had taken a barrier post I had outside because I kept meaning to put it in the shed and kept forgetting he'd taken that without asking me and put it around the front here with a little Christmas tree stuck in the top of it. <clears throat> um, now, he's accused me, not to my face, I've actually heard him talk to the neighbours, but he's accused me of stealing said tree. Now, when I came home that evening, when I found the barrier post, that's all I found. The barrier post laying on its side, out front, and that was it. Actually, there was a blue baby sock with it for some reason. Um, but yeah, because you know that went missing in the tree, or because I moved the barrier post back to where it came from, even though he didn't ask me, all he had to do was knock on my door. I hate people like that, you know. It's not like I'd have said no, I'd have said yes, you can use it, you know. Just 
ask. <laughs> it's not difficult. <clears throat> you know, you live right opposite me, for God's sake. All you've got to do is walk across the hall and just ask. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, he's um, accused me of that. And a few days after that, I came home from Mum's one evening and found that one of the mountain bikes stored outside had been vandalised. All the wheels had been buckled. Thing is, it wasn't my mountain bike. It was actually a friend's mountain bike, and he'd left it here because he wanted a, um, a different saddle put on it. And I, I was going to do a couple of other things. Can't remember what it was now. But I ended up changing the wheels because they were just buckled beyond repair. And I know it was him because again. After that incident, not long after it, like a week maybe, <clears throat> I heard him talking to the neighbour below me in the stairwell. You know, talk, talking about the Christmas tree and, you know, accusing me of it and whatnot. Oh no, it was him, blah, blah, blah. And then he turned around and said, well, I've got my own back on him anyway. You put two and two together. The only thing that happened before he I heard him say that to my neighbour was the vandalism to the bike there was nothing else nothing else had been damaged, nothing else had been stolen or anything like that, that was the only thing so two and two together, you know make one obvious it was him uh, yeah, so fast forward to this Christmas So, I decided to put Christmas lights around the shed at that end of the block, because it's right by the roadside, you know. When you've got that, then you've got the um, resident car park, and then you've got the road and pavement and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> and of course, the next day after I put them up, I was outside, and I see my neighbour, and we were talking about that, and I said, yeah, that was me that put those ones up. I said I weren't made to put the ones on the rose bush though, but I put the ones up around the shed. Two nights later, those ones, my ones, get vandalised. Coincidence? Possibly. Anywho, this same person, for the last three years, <clears throat> not every night, not even every week, not even every month, purely at random, will just slam his door at night. Any time, was it now, coming up to 2.30, yeah, from about midnight till 6 o'clock in the morning, it could be any time during that, he will just slam his door. Usually sort of 2, 2.30, 3 o'clock, something like that. Usually. But it can actually be any time. Sometimes it's been a lot earlier, sometimes it's been a lot later. Now, I don't know if any of the other residents have figured out who it is, but I figured it out two years ago who it was. And I know for a fact it is him. I know for a fact it's him doing that. And he'll be doing it for two reasons. He likes to stir shit, basically. He likes to stir the old pot. So he'll be doing that. One, because he knows it's going to piss off the neighbour below me. And two... Because I've known sometimes for getting, you know, what's the word, a bit noisy up here, you know, dropping things on the floor and whatnot. He's thinking that I'll get the blame for it. That's the only two reasons he'll do it. You know, just to stir that pot. You know, hopefully stir it between me and the neighbour below me. I'm hoping that the neighbour below me is not that dumb. Because you should be able to tell if a door being slammed is coming from the flat directly above you or not. <laughs> so, I'd like to think that the uh, guy below me is not that stupid to believe it's me. Besides, you know, I, I actually don't have any interior doors apart from the bathroom. And it's not easy to slam my front door because it's got that pissing door closure spring on it. Drives me nuts. It's been driving me nuts for the... 13 and a half years or so I've been in this flat and I kept threatening to take it off and I still haven't done it. 
it's still up there. Anyway, so yeah. <clears throat> um, and he does lots of other things just to piss off the neighbours around here. You know, um, the lady that has the shed next to mine, he's got this habit of putting his um, empty energy drink cans and bottles on her door handle. She, he's been doing that for years now. And she still hasn't figured out who it is. That's one thing I can't get the blame for, because I can't drink energy drinks. I don't drink energy drinks. I used to before I was diagnosed diabetic, but ever since that I've not touched them. Not even the sugar-free ones. <clears throat> um, you know, so he does do pay stuff like that. And this evening, I was actually here in the bedroom, playing games with Smudge on the bed, actually. She was, you know, giving my hand a good scratching, like she likes to do. <laughs> and this was completely unlike him, because usually, you know, in the 13 years I've been here, I know his routine. In the evenings, you know, because his mum lives down the road, so he'll go and see his mum sort of half four-ish he'll leave, he'll go and get tea and he'll eat it down there at his mum's and whatnot. And he comes back sort of 7, 7.30 in the evening. Done that ever since I've lived in this flat. And this evening, I heard him sneak out of his flat, you know. And if you just let your front door close, on the door closure, it makes quite a clack. He made sure it didn't do that. So I thought, because I am very suspicious of him at the minute. I'd go through to the bathroom, which is to the back of the building. And I must have timed it just right, because I threw the bathroom window open. So I could just see the pathway from the back door to see if anyone came out. Didn't see anyone, but I heard the door close. And literally not long after that, again, I didn't hear footsteps up the stairs, but I heard him go back in his flat. So it could be nothing but why would you go down there like that for no reason just to stick your head out of the door. My mum said well maybe he forgot something. I said but he didn't go back out. He literally came back up the stairs and that was it. <clears throat> and like I said I was actually watching I could see the end of the path, the end of the railing so he didn't actually leave the block. So, I'm pretty certain he heard my bathroom window open because I actually made a point of making a noise with it. You know, and looked up, saw the bathroom window was open but no lights on. So probably thinking, you know, I was watching. Came back in, came back up the stairs. And I think he was actually going out there to try and do something again. Because <clears throat> like I said, him doing that is completely out of his character and out of his routine. But uh, I could just be barking up the wrong tree. You know, I can't prove anything. You guys can only go by what I'm saying. You know, you've only got my side of the story, so I don't blame you if you don't believe any of it. Um, <clears throat> Might have to go and get another drink. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's my suspicion on what's going on. So now, Thursday or thereafter, I've got to fork out to have another tyre replaced on the front of my bike. In a sense, I'm glad it's the front, because it's going to be the cheaper of the two, especially labour-wise. Because the problem with the rear tyre, you've got to take the bloody exhaust off. So obviously that's more labour. So it's going to cost me more. <laughs> the front wheel is just a case of putting it in whatever or on whatever stand they've got and undoing the axle, sliding it out, dropping the wheel out, put your new tyre on, pump it up, make sure it's not leaking, throw it back on the bike. It'll probably take about half an hour. So in theory it shouldn't cost me any Well it cost me 215 quid to have both tyres done, a light bulb and the MOT. So I'm not expecting it to cost any more than a hundred quid, but still, it's expensive. I don't really want, especially when I've just had two new tyres put on that bike. 
and I've only ridden the bike six times since then. <laughs> so yeah, that is a bit of a piss off, to be honest. That, and I can't go over to Mum's because there's things I need to sort out over there. She could come and get me, but that costs petrol, you know. Her Jeep Compass is going to use more petrol than my dinky little hairdryer out back. So, uh, <clears throat> we're going to put some plans into action. She wants uh, to sit with me and fill in a form with for Victory Housing to put me on their, whatever they call it, rehousing list. <clears throat> to get me, the ball rolling, to get me moved out of here. It's going to put me on universal credit because I've never understood this. When you want benefits, when you move, you have to reclaim those benefits. They don't just change the address. Never freaking understood that, but that's how it's always been. Anyway, but uh, I've been told from reliable sources that the government are going to put everybody on universal credit, um, I think next year anyway so eh, might as well get it done out of the way but like I said I'm not looking forward to it <clears throat> just because I know quite a few people that have to claim universal credit my mum and stepdad being one of them and a good friend of mine being the other one and he works two jobs he works two jobs and still has to claim universal credit just to make sure his rent is paid that's that's ridiculous in my opinion. Working two jobs that should pay you enough to be able to live, but it doesn't. <clears throat> anyway, that's a whole different rant and something else I could talk about in another video. Um, yeah, but of course, she actually said what she's going to do tomorrow is actually go online and go through the form and see what she can actually fill in without me and then if there's any, anything she needs to know just she'll give me a ring <clears throat> uh, but she also wants to talk to my um, housing officer as well to um, see if I can get any tenancy help I was on that scheme the tenancy help scheme but because uh, I didn't reply because I didn't know I was on the tenancy help scheme because there's something mum did and she totally forgot about it and didn't tell me so but yeah I'm now you know they dropped that because I didn't reply so let's see if I can get back on that as well because I've 13 and a half years you know I've had enough here basically and I just can't put up with you know childish behaviour like that he's older than me you won't start acting his bleeding age. <clears throat> you know, even if he's totally innocent and he didn't damage my tyre or my, my Christmas lights, you know, he still does that door slamming. And to me, that's annoying enough. After three years of that, I've just had enough. And I don't see any point reporting it to Victory because I can't prove it. <laughs> you know, what am I going to do? Try and hide a camera out there or something? <clears throat> what I could actually do, I could very easily do that. You know, I actually do have a proper home CCTV camera that I bought. I just can't remember where I've put the piss and thing. <laughs> With all the umpteen metres of cable and whatnot, night vision and lots, I could easily hide that outside the front door and just leave it recording. Or I could stick it outside the back window, you know, screw it to the window ledge and have it pointing downwards just to see if he does do anything out there. That's the only thing I can do. <clears throat> Actually, I might do that, to be honest, because at least that way I'd find out if it's him or someone else that's been doing it, you know. I'd get an answer either way, wouldn't I? It might take weeks and months of it being out there recording, but it'd probably be worth it just to get answers. Now I want to find that camera. I put it in something. I can't remember what that something is. <laughs> Never mind. That means I could actually put my uh, monitor to good use as well. 
but I'd have to find a way to record it. I haven't got a DVD recorder or anything like that, so I can't record to that. I've got VHS. <laughs> well, that would literally mean that I would probably have to uh, change the tape on a regular basis or rewind it and record over it, and I don't really want to do that. I don't want to go back to the Stone Age. You know, it's fun doing that when you just just want to play around, but when you actually want to put, put something into a permanent use, you know, really want to be doing that. Uh, I wonder if I've got a laptop or something that I could connect the camera to and record that way. To like an external hard drive or something. Or even one of my umpteen desktops. You know, I've got monitor and everything in the kitchen I could connect the uh, desktop to and as it's one camera I could put it through like an RCA splitter so I could connect it to a monitor so I can actually monitor what's going on and <clears throat> you know one going out to whatever I'm using to record that's another option I suppose I have to have a think and uh, might have to buy a few things, maybe, I don't know what I'll need. I mean, the camera itself has come with all the necessary cables and things. And I haven't got a recording device for the other end. I've got a monitoring device. I've actually got a CCTV monitor in the cupboard. I rescued from a skip when they were stripping out the old town council office there. <laughs> I think I'm glad I rescued that now. I've actually got a camera I can actually plug straight into it. Um... Yeah, I'm going to have to have a think on that. Right. Bicycle lights, that was the other thing. And I can actually tell you what I've been up to with one of my trikes as well. So, <clears throat> as I've mentioned before, I actually own two trikes. One cost me 200 quid, which is the modern blue and silver one I've got with 24 inch wheels and V brakes and whatnot, lovely thing to ride. I absolutely adore riding that thing. Um, and the other one was a vintage Pashley single speed that I bought for 20 quid <laughs> last year. Last summer, I think it was, spring, summer. But it didn't have, you know, any form of box or basket on the back like my blue and silver one has. It just came with nothing. Um, and a very bad paint job. <laughs> but it'll do for now. At some point I do want to take it all apart and, re you know, do a proper paint job on that frame. But, um, for now it'll just be sufficient as is. Although the brakes work better on that bike. <laughs> Well, the front brake is fine on the uh, modern one, it's just the rear brake is shit. Because <laughs> it's like a drum brake thing which is mounted on the um, driven axle, or the driven wheel. Because the blue one, only one wheel is driven, the right hand wheel is the only wheel that is driven on that one. And the vintage Pashley, both rear wheels are driven. But, but the two brakes are actually mounted on the front wheel. I've actually seen some modern um, special needs trikes which have been built the same way. So my pashi has got a drum brake as well as a rim brake. <clears throat> but they do work a lot better. It's a bit harder to pedal because it's only got the one gear. Anyway, I did find a box to put on the back so I've bolted that on. It's um, what they call a pirate chest. I don't know if anybody remembers them. It's like a big plastic tote, um, tote thing with a arched lid. And a little bit on it so you can put a padlock on it. <clears throat> I actually remember having two of those when I was a kid. One blue and one red one. I think the red one had Lego in and I kept the car, toy cars and whatnot in the blue one. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. One second, I'm just going to go and grab a drink. I'm not far away, I'm in the hallway. I return. <clears throat> I don't know if you actually heard that from back there, but I did say I went far away. I was in the hallway. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I've done all that with my trike. Um, and for lights, because it's a vintage sort of 1970s trike, I thought I'd put some retro lights on it. And these ones are a few years newer. <laughs> I think these were actually uh, released in the 80s. Some Ever Ready Night Rider lights. Similar to this, this is a much newer one than them. It's got a clicky button on there, but basically same design. And they're white, not black. And I obviously took a photo of it, you know, saying, and I've done a very good job. Put it onto a Facebook group called Beautifully Practical Steel Bikes. And it did get a lot of positive reception, actually. A lot of people seem to like that. But someone did say I should take those old lights off and put modern ones on. Because those old lights are crap, were always crap, and don't compare to modern lights. Well, duh. <laughs> no old light is going to compare to modern LED lights. <clears throat> but, those old retro lights, they're still good and bright. You put a decent set of batteries in them, they last you a decent length of time. It just depends on how often you use that bike at night. Um, and I think what they really mean by crap and don't compare is because the front lights never gave a good beam of light for you to see by. You know, so they were absolutely shit if you wanted to see where you were going. So if you lived out in the countryside, for example, you know, or in one of these dinky little villages here in Norfolk with uh, no street lighting, you're buggered. <laughs> yeah, cars could see you really well. I mean, this is the real one. The Ever Ready version, which was the original version, is just as bright as this one and clear. It's a pretty much exact same light. I think the only thing they've changed is the body style here very slightly. And they've put a push button on the top rather than a slide switch, which is what the Ever Readies have. I haven't got the Ever Readies up here now to show you. But the lens and the reflector is exactly the same. <coughs> so, uh,. Yeah, from the perspective of other road users being able to see it, they are just as good as modern lights. From the perspective of uh, being able to see where you're going, nah. <laughs> Not so good. Um, so, to me, it just depends on what you need to use that bike for. I mean... Granted, lights like these old lights are not going to be very good on the batteries. So they're going to eat through them like they're going out of fashion. You know, because it's an incandescent bulb in there. It's not LED. But, if you go on eBay, I don't know if Amazon would sell them. I haven't looked. But if you go on eBay, you can buy LED torch bulbs. Because that's all this is. Just an ordinary incandescent torch bulb in there. Um, so you could potentially at least for battery life, upgrade to LED bulbs. If you did really, you know, if you're one of these um, enthusiasts that love riding vintage bikes around, so you put on, you know, the period correct battery lights as well, and you want that um, extra battery life, you could actually upgrade to LED and get that. And still have the original looking lamps on there. Which is actually what I want to do with a few of mine. I did get a couple of the LED torch bulbs, but I didn't like those ones. Because you do get different designs of them. So I'm, I'm going to experiment and get a couple of different other designs. And see if I like them and see which actually works better. Because <clears throat> I wouldn't mind upgrading the lights so I can actually use them properly. Without you know worrying too much about battery life. Because those D-cells... That's what these lights use. They used a big old round D cell battery um, with an LED bulb in there. They're going to last a good length of time. Probably three, four, maybe even five times longer than um, they would with an incandescent bulb in there. But uh, yeah, but it also got me thinking, you know, even today, I see kids in the pitch black, riding around town with no lights on their bike. Or reflectors half the time. Now reflectors aren't cool, so they take them off. 
you know. When I was their age, my parents would not allow me to ride the bike at night unless it had lights on it. I had to have working lights on it, otherwise I wasn't allowed to ride it. I had to walk. And now these days I'm seeing, I'm even seeing adults as well that ride their bikes around in the pitch black. Dark clothing as well. Again, most of them don't even have bloody reflectors on. But I don't understand why. You know, they spend like two, three, four hundred quid on a new bike. Either for themselves or for the kids. <clears throat> or even a hundred quid, you know, if they get a second hand one, even fifty quid. And yet, you can get lights like this, the Rolson branded, for two ninety nine, maybe three ninety nine, depending where you go. They're not that expensive. And yes, they use uh, the CR twenty thirty two batteries, but you can pick packs of like six of these up for a couple of quid as well. That's at least three battery changes in one of these, and you just got to pop it out like that. You pop this. This one is actually knackered. See, so it's all rusted in there. If you just pop that cover off, you put your two batteries back in, you put this cover back on, Bob's your uncle, new batteries. <laughs> you don't even need tools. You don't need a screwdriver to get that battery cover off. You don't need tools to put it on your bike. You just put it over your handlebar, wrap that around, that's it. And for the rear one, it's around your seat post. And these, just these alone, would be actually adequate enough just for other road ridges to see you when you're cycling about town. And when you're done, you can just take them off your bike and stick them in your pocket. That way they don't get nicked either. <laughs> so, I don't understand why so many people are still riding around with no freaking lights on. And why parents are letting their kids ride around with no lights. I mean, I'm sure they could, if they could afford to get the kid you know, a 50, 60, 70 or even a 100 quid bike, I'm sure they can afford the four quid for a pair of them lights. And then, you know, just a couple of quid, what, every couple of months, maybe, just for a pack of these? I mean, I get big cards out of Lidl's of all sorts of those batteries for a few quid. So <laughs> they're not expensive to buy. Unless you went for something like Duracell, then you'd have to... Okay, but I actually find the cheap CR2032 batteries work just as well to be honest. Uh, yeah, that is just one of my biggest pet peeves that it really irks me to see people running around at night with no lights on. You just <laughs> you can even pick um half decent sets up cheap enough. You know. I think this set was like twelve ninety nine out of Argos. Albeit, I wouldn't recommend them. These are made by Challenge. Front light, not that bad. It's actually quite bright. See, you've got different features. You've actually got full bright and dims down, and you've got flashing patterns and off. So that can't complain. That's actually decent light. Right. Didn't come with batteries though, so I've put brand spanking new. Energizer triple A's in there, right? I think there's actually three of them for this light <clears throat> So of course out of the same brand new pack I put two energizers in this one That's how bright it is on steady mode if I put it in flash It's a little bit brighter, but it's still crap You know I'll do a little comparison, right? This is a 1990s light. I actually bought a set of these brand new back then. And it comes here, it came with this light, your front light, and a little LED, three LED lamp. But and quite clearly, you see the difference. Now, this is an old light, you know, they're crap. They don't compare to modern lights, really. This, this is brand new batteries. Yeah, so for that reason, I mean, if you wanted the set just for a half decent front light, then yeah. But, yeah, 
I cannot recommend that set to be honest. And then I actually went into Q day, Q days, QDs. Not lot, not many days actually. Actually, probably about a week after I bought these from Argos, um, and found that they had Dunlop branded bike lights. Now they're selling the front and rear separately, which isn't always a bad thing because you might just need a rear light because your rear light is broken or the same for the front one. Um, front one's not that bad. It doesn't really give off a good beam of light, you know, to see where you're going, but it's perfectly bright enough um, for other road users to see it. It's actually perfectly adequate. That just doesn't throw a good beam of light. That's the only issue with it. And the rear light is actually pretty good as well. Um, so I was quite impressed with that set. They're currently on the... Um, blue and silver trike. I did have two front lights but the other one failed, it got wet. Bike lights are meant to be water resistant but apparently not all of them are. You'd have thought that one would be considering it's completely covered with this um, silicon case thing but nope. You saw the inside of that battery pack, that's totally knackered that one. Actually speaking of, when I was looking at bike lights in um, Argos last year Probably about November time actually. I did see that they had these for sale. 12 quid a pair. Which I thought was utterly disgusting. I think it was 12 quid a pair. I'm going to go look on Argos in a minute. and just double check that. Um, because if you go into like QD stores. They were. Unless they've had to put the price up a little bit. But they were 2 99 for a pair. I think the most I've actually seen these for is like three ninety nine on eBay. You know, these are actually quite cheap. And they do the job. <laughs> I mean, for that money, you could probably buy two pairs of these and just have two on the front and two on the rear. Oh, that's the other thing I didn't really like too much about this, is that I've got a strap for the bracket. I never really have liked them on front lights. Because I find you just can't get a tight enough grip with this. And that just, the light just tends to do that on the handlebar and it just gets annoying. <clears throat> Having to keep putting it straight and whatnot so other drivers can see you. Because obviously it's no good pointing up in the air like that, is it? There's no good pointing down the floor like that. So yeah, that that's just a, a little irk of the light really. But other than that, it's a good light. It's good enough. I think that one might actually go back on the trike. Oh, actually, in that Dunlop light, the front one, it's actually been designed. So it's like one of those um, little LED torches, like about that big, with the aluminium case, the metal casing. It takes three um, AAA batteries. I don't have one at hand to show you, but I have got a few of them. Where have I? Is there one in this drawer? Might be in the bag actually. It's not in the back of the drawer. But I have got a few of them. <clears throat> but it's designed like one of those, so it's actually quite nice to hold and use as a torch as well. Um, not that it throws off much light. Maybe the batteries are just crap because I don't think they came with batteries either. Maybe I'll just put shitty batteries in it. Might buy a some decent ones later in the week and uh, try those. We'll try some batteries out of one of these lights. <laughs> See if that work, helps. Works helps, something like that. <sighs> Actually, I thought it was going to take longer to get through the main topics than it actually has. I won't go for the hour like I normally do. I've got like uh, 12 minutes left. I'm looking at my clock down there. <clears throat> so, what else have I actually been up to then? Well, sold a mountain bike yesterday, technically. Um, it's my Rally Scafell I've had for a few years now. Because um, I was poking around in the shed uh, the other day and sorting bikes out in there. So I wanted to get a racing bike out of there because I wanted to put that up for sale. No interest in that one yet, actually. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just took the Scafell for a ride and I thought, yeah, I don't really like this one anymore. Because I built that 
sort of mint green rally bike up, didn't I? The vintage one. A sort of 1980s, early 1990s one. And I actually love riding that one around, so I thought, yeah, I'll get rid of the Scafell now, so I took the lights off of it and whatnot. Didn't take the pump off, didn't take the um, bottle holder off. So I didn't really want those. I wanted the mud guards and the lights for the Claude Butler over at Mum's, that's why I took those off. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so got that one out of the way. The racer is up for sale. The two bike trailers I got are up for sale because I use the trikes now. I don't use the trailers, I don't need the trailers anymore, so I thought I'd put those up for sale and get shot of them. A couple of them quarries, but they haven't gone anywhere. Um, I've put a computer case up for sale because um, I've actually dismantled one of my gaming rigs because my uh, youngest brother contacted me. I think it was yes, yeah, it was yesterday or the day before, one or the other, wanting to know if I actually had any PC parts or what to get rid of. And I just sort of sat there thinking. I thought, you know what? I don't really need that one. And it's rather big and heavy to post all the way to Ireland. I don't really feel like packing it up. And he just asked me for the parts anyway. So I just took it apart. <laughs> um, so he's going to have the motherboard heatsink processor. Um, that had my Vengeance RAM in. So I kept that and I put that in my Windows, Windows 7. In my i7 build. So that's now got the um, 16 gigs of Vengeance RAM in. And the RAM from that. I put in that motherboard, it's, it's currently got 8 gigs installed now. <clears throat> um, it's only had 2 gig sticks, so... But yeah, it can take up to 16 gigs, that motherboard. Um, so if he wants to upgrade it at some point, he can. Um, SSD... Um, and he did ask if I had any Intel processors. I've got an i3 somewhere, but I think that's a bit old for what he wants to do. Um, but I did have a couple of spare i7s. There's one that actually matches um, my i7 build, so I've kept that one. It is tested, it works. In fact, <laughs> when I swapped the processors to test it, because I didn't know if it actually worked, but I thought, while well, I've got the computer out, I might as well just swap it over and test it actually just left it in the sock, I didn't bother swapping the other one back. I didn't see the point. And when I looked at what the sort of processor it was, it's exactly the same as the one I took out. So I thought, well, there's no point swapping them back now, is there? Just leave them. <laughs> so I just put a bit of thermal paste on it and just stuck the heat sink back on it. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I had a couple of others. You only wanted one of them though, so I'm chucking that in. Uh, so that's all sitting there ready for him. Whenever he's ready to pay for it, I'll be ready to ship it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he offered me 60 quid and I thought, yeah, that'll do. I'm not fussy. But yeah, I decided to put the case up on Marketplace. No takers yet. I might have to... I think because things are so tough at the minute, you got to try and sort of balance it between... Not least putting things up for silly prices, you know, so you get below the value, value, but pricing it so people are still going to want to buy it, you know, so, you know, they're still going to want to save, aren't they? We all are. We're not going to want to pay um, too much for anything if we can avoid it. You know, I let my rally scaffold go for 40 quid, and I actually did quite a lot of work on that last year, or the year before, I should say. <clears throat> you know, new um, V brakes. I even changed the gear shifters for my favourite style. I don't think they were brand new though. I think I took those from another bike as I switched them over on another bike, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> so it's sort of a it's a balancing act, uh, balancing trick with the prices at the minute. I mean, I have actually put all near offer in the description, but hardly anybody ever reads a bloody description anyway. <clears throat> I don't know why I bother writing them, to be honest. I might as well just put the title and the... Um... Actually, I have seen a lot of people do this. They literally just put the title and that is it. The title and a photo, that's it. Maybe collection, 
in the description. That is it. Now don't bother putting a detailed description in there because hardly anyone reads it. I do. I take the time to read them. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't bother when I'm selling a bike on marketplace. I don't bother putting like frame size, wheel size, number of gears on it anymore. Because I guarantee, you know, if I did, I'm still going to get asked in messages. So I just don't bother. <laughs> you know, if they want to know, just ask me. Because you're going to bloody ask me anyway, whether I write it there or not. So it's just a waste of my time and whatnot. Here we go. <sighs> I still haven't decided what route I want to take with all this die cast I've got up here to sell. I want like three tubs of it at the minute. I'm going to show you that. What's on the bench is not for sale, it's just what's in here. <clears throat> um, I know I've got at least one viewer that's in a die cast. The one that actually asked me the question that I can't, and I can't remember his YouTube now. So I don't know if there's anything here he'd be interested in. Sorry, the Morris Marina is not for sale. Not yet. Might be at some point in the future if I get bored with it or something, but for now it's not. Um, I think a lot of what's actually in here is like just spares repair. There's some good stuff in it. Also, there's a whole wheels. Oh, it is. I've got some Hot Wheels now. I want to separate the Hot Wheels out though. Um, I don't know if I'm just going to try and sell them as job lots of 10 on eBay or something because I haven't actually sold anything on eBay for a while. <clears throat> but yeah, either way I do want to swap things over. I've got my oh yeah, 400E Vanguards there. Boxed. Some, see, I've got some matchbox which are basically going to be spares repairs. I might actually eBay these ones. You know, simply because uh, that seems to be where people go when they just want matchbox for spares or repairs. To either restore or just for the parts or for a scrapyard diorama or something like that. That one I think would be ideal in a scrapyard diorama. It's got all the tyres missing, it just looks the part, doesn't it? Damaged window there, damaged pillar there as well. And there is some half decent stuff in here as well. I mean, I've got this truck that's a bit damaged on the tanker, but that is out of the three Texaco tankers I've got in here, that is the best one. Apart from that bit, I just realised. <laughs> Though, well, actually, I suppose I could super glue that bit back down. But apart from the faded bit there, that's actually in better condition. Um, yeah, it's a bit sun faded because it's not too bad on that side. So you can tell which side's been facing the sun. The truck has lost its stripes off the hood as well. But yeah, that just needs gluing back down and gluing back together there. I think that would um, be all right. But. Uh, you know, job lots of sort of <laughs> spares or repairs or scrap matchbox and whatnot seem to sell quite well on eBay, so well, that's most likely what I'll do with the shitty matchbox anyway. Or any of the crappier cars. I mean, good stuff like that van I want. All the Hot Wheels. What else have we got in here? Old Capri. Being a Capri, that one might actually sell well as it is, even if it's a bit rough. Um, you see, some of these, like this Capri, I could probably put that one up on the Diecast Scrapyard group for sale, and that one would probably sell. I don't want to just stick one up. <laughs> um, that is unless anyone who watches my channel wants me to set this lot up somewhere like on here and do a little video on it so you can see what's here and see if there's anything you want I might actually keep that because I might need those axles 
because um, I've got that Mur Hill tractor, haven't I? And I think in the box under here, I've got the Mur Hill trailer. It's got bent axles. I was just thinking this rear one might actually be long enough. But then again, oh, yep. There's just enough poking out there for me to grind that little mushroom off and get the axle off. I should be able to pinch it again to put it back on the trailer. If it's the right length, I'd have to measure it up, but that'll be something I'll do tomorrow. Corgi roller. I've actually got another one of these. I've actually had a few of these. Shell tanker. I don't think I've got the tractor for that. See, there's another half decent one there. It's in relatively good condition, that Land Rover. Another Duckham's. I see quite a few of the Duckham's. Uh, Corgi Land Rovers and Escorts. I think I've got about three of the bloody Escorts. That's another half decent Superman van. It's not as good as my other one down here though. I've got one of these in here as well. I've already got an Espana 82. I'll have to go through this box. Some of this might be okay to actually put on the groups. I think that's what I'll do with the half decent stuff anyway. The half decent to decent stuff will go on the uh, up on Facebook on the groups. I'm not going to put it on Marketplace. <clears throat> I'll try and do it so it's sorted by. Um, brand just to make things a bit easier and I've actually got some die cast it arrived yesterday took three weeks to get here because <laughs> I bought it or it was posted a week before Christmas and it only arrived Saturday um, yeah I'm going to do those in a separate video because I've got a couple of other things that I forgot um, to include in the other video I, how I forgot uh, about these, you know, these big old combines, I have no idea. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm likely to go and get some more. In fact, the chap I get die cast from, he's got some um, Atlas dinkies there. I might have a look through them. It just depends what this uh, moped's going to sting me this week. Anyway. <clears throat> You know, it's not like I've got a choice in the matter. If I want to use the moped, I've got to fix it, so. <clears throat> and I don't, well, I wouldn't want to do an insurance claim to be on. Oh, I've got another one of these. Yeah, anyway. That time I actually uh, pulled my finger out, as we say, and uh, got a bunch of stuff up for sale. There's got lots of stuff I actually want to sell just to clear some space in the flat um yeah i think i'm running a bit over the hour now from the looks of it yeah i'm just over <clears throat> um so let me know in the comments whoops if you actually made it this far in a video and i'm blaming if you've turned off um by now um but yeah if you made it this far let me know in the comments if you want to see any of this stuff i've got for sale and see if there's anything here you want um, <clears throat> I'm probably going to be adding to it tomorrow as well. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching everyone. And, uh, you know, as always, I'm going to leave links to my other two channels and uh, our Discord server down below in the uh, description. Um, you know, where to put your comments. If you liked the video, then give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And, uh, itchy eyeball. I will uh, see you in the next video. Bye.